AMC 10A 2020 Problem 23. Let T be the triangle in the corner plane system with 0, 0, 4, 0, and 0, 3. Consider the following five iso isometries, which are transformations of the plane. Rotations of 90, 180, and 270 degrees counterclockwise around the origin. Reflection across the x-axis and reflection across the y-axis. For how many of the 125 sequences of three of these transformations, not necessarily distinct, which is very important, will return T to its original position? And the rest gives us an example, which we do not need to read. So... Well, it is good to read the examples, but I have already pre-read it. And if you understand the question, then the example will be intuitive. So when dealing with geometric problems like these, draw a graph to represent what it's trying to show. We have a right triangle as this. And we know that we can only use rotations and reflections. So let's break them up into casework. We can do first with case one concerning reflections. And we can do case two concerning uh, rotations. And let's do case two first. Rotations, by the way, is independent from reflection. It's, in, it's independent from case one, meaning rotations will be pure rotations. And I'll get to that in a minute. The reason why we can just consider pure rotation possibility is because we do not necessarily need to reflect and rotate at the same time to result in the same shape again. But there is the possibility, so we must consider the case as well. So we have two cases. First, rotation. Rotation, well... How do we rotate this shape so that it can go back to its original position no matter how many times we do it? Well, it must be a multiple of 360 degrees, right? Because k being from 0, 1, 2, all the way, and so on. Because 360 degrees is the same thing as going full revolution, or in other words, canceling out any movement at all. So how many of the 360 degree multiples can we achieve from the given criteria of 90, 180, and 270 degree rotations? Well, what is the smallest number? What is the smallest degree of rotation that we can do? Well, that would be 3 times 90, which is 270 degrees. Because we have three rotations that we can do. And if we put all three as the smallest possible choice that we can do, then we will consequently get the smallest number of degrees that we can rotate this shape. And likewise, for the largest, it will be taking the largest for each of the three rotations, which will be 3 times 270, which will be 810 degrees. So the smallest we can compose is 270, and we can compose 810, as well as the maximum. So how many 360 degrees, multiples of 360 degrees, match between this inclusive interval? Well, obviously, it will be 360 and 720. So now that we have the two possible combinations of 360 degrees that we can make, we can begin to break them down. 360 can be written as 180 plus 180. 80, 180 is equal to 90 plus 90 plus 180. And can we break this down any further? We can't. We can break this down into 270 plus 90. But then we must break down 270 again, and we can break that down only to 80, 180 plus 90 plus 90, because we're only allowed to use 90, 180, and 270 degree rotations. So you see here that 360 degrees, based on the given criteria, can only be composed of two 180s and one 90 degree rotations. And since we do not really care about the order, for example, I can first perform the 90 degree rotation, then the 180 degree rotation, then the 90 degree rotation. As long as the sum of the rotations counterclockwise, they're not going opposite directions, they're all going to the same direction. As long as this, this type of transformation, this type of rotation, sums to 360, then we will be good to go because it will be canceling out any rotation at all. It will not alter the shape to its original. So we have 90, 180, 90 is one possibility. 90, 90, 180 is our second possibility. And 180, 90, 90 is our third possibility. So in total, 360 degrees can only result in three possibilities. And what about 720? Well, 720 can be broken down into 270 plus 0, 5, 4, 50, which is the same thing as 270 plus 270 plus 180. Now, this is the only type of breakdown that you can do, given that we can only do 90, 180, and 270 degree rotations. So likewise, for the first order, I don't care which one I do first. As long as the sum of each rotation sums 360, I'm fine. So I have, again, three possibilities here. Added to the three possibilities from 360 degrees, we get six total possibilities for case two. So I'll put six right here. Now we just need to consider case one. Summing the two answers, we'll get our answer. So reflections. Think about reflections. Reflection, if I reflect across the x-axis, will result in this shape. And no matter how much rotation I can do, it will not result back in the same shape because reflection changes orientation and rotation cannot alter orientation. So in order to cancel this out, we must reflect it across the y-axis. 
to change it back to its proper dimensions. And why is this so? Because if we don't do this, what will result to it? If we just do two reflections across the x-axis, it will just cancel out the entire thing. And since we can only do one more rotation or another reflection, we obviously know that, okay, so I might be going a little fast here, but I have two reflections, for example. So I have one reflection across the x-axis, another reflection across the x-axis. This cancels it out, so it results back into the original shape. We can either reflect it again, which won't help us because if we reflect it, it will obviously not be in the original position, or we can rotate it. But there, we cannot rotate it 360 degrees. We can only rotate 90, 180, and 270 degrees. So no amount of rotation after the reflection of the same type can help us go back to the original shape. So we cannot do the reflection over the same axis twice. So that, deduce, that boils down to be only allowing us to do one reflection of the x-axis, one reflection of the y-axis. By doing this, we have conveniently traveled 180 degrees. It's obvious when you try to visual it, visual it out. And after you do this, we must do one more rotation. Why can't we do a reflection? Because we're only allowed to do reflection over the x and y axis. If we reflect it again, it will only rotate it 270 degrees, which will not get us back to the original shape. So the third one must be a rotation. What is the rotation? Well, reflection across the x-axis plus reflection across the y-axis will be totaling to 180 degrees rotation around the origin. So we must do another 180 degree rotation to help us go back to the original case. And since each of these are distinct, meaning that we can do, meaning that the order for which we do them do matter, we can do the permutation of three of two pick three. Since we're trying to pick two of the reflections in order out of the three total possibilities. So this becomes three factorial over three minus two factorial, which gives six. And you actually didn't even need to think of it as a factorial, I mean, as a permutation rather. You could have just thought of it as the same ordering process because we do not necessarily need to reflect y in the middle or reflect x in, for first. We can alter these two scenarios all around, but for every single case, it can occupy two spaces. I can do the reflection of x first, or the reflection of, of x second. I cannot reflect it again because I have already taken up the two other spaces it can possibly hold. So, so therefore, it should come out and boil down to be quite simple. And for those that don't understand it, I'll explain it even further. So I have A, B, C. A represents reflection across the x-axis. B re represents reflection across the y. C represents the 180-degree rotation. A can occupy B. A can also occupy C. B can occupy A. B can occupy C, C can occupy A, and C can occupy B for a total of six possibilities. And this is possible because it says that they are not necessarily need to be in the same order for which they occur. And as long as that these criteria that we have reflected across the x-axis once, reflected across the y-axis once, and rotated 180 degrees counterclockwise, then we will be safe. So it doesn't matter how we do it, it just matters how many we do it. So we have a total of six possibilities here meaning that for case one, we have six possibilities. And since for case work, we must sum the cases, not multiply, we add six and six to get a final result of answer choice A, which is 12.